Yes, yes, and welcome back to the official Source of Kian YouTube channel. This is a channel which is going to teach you all about how to master the art of sourcing products from China. Now, let's get straight into it. We're in a bit of a funny situation right now with freight. What's happening with shipping? What's going on? Why are the prices so high? How long is this going to last? What can we do about it? There's so many questions, and in this video, I'm going to break down how you can save money in the current freight climate. Let's go. So let's get straight into it, right? Freight is in a very funny situation right now. I'm sure you guys have been getting multiple price quotes and you've seen container prices which were, let's say, $2,000 a couple of years ago, went up to $5,000, then $8,000, then $12,000, then $15,000, then $20,000. And I've even seen some quotes for over $25,000. So how is this happening? How did we get here? What is the current situation? So point number one I want to address Current situation. How did we get here? Well, I'm just going to call it the situation. The situation happened, and then as a result, it turbocharged the demand for goods from China. So, you know, as people were seeking like home offices, home fitness, like gardening, all that sort of stuff, and the demand went up, and we were not spending um, income on holidays and things like that anymore. We we're just now spending more goods, uh, more money online, and as a result, it turbocharged the the volume for goods. Now. What happened was the shipments were pretty normal at the start and as these containers were coming in, they were then getting held up and stuck at the port uh, in the US, in the UK, in Europe. And the reason was if there was ever a positive case from someone working in the warehouse, well, they'd have to close the warehouse for that day or close the, the port for that day until they tested everyone, everyone's negative, everyone can get back to work. And they're also working a lot slower uh, because of the distancing, etc. Now, when they close down, that's a day that these containers aren't getting unloaded. And when it closed down a few times and for a few days or it gets closed down for two weeks, well now these con containers and uh, vessels are backing up and backing up and backing up. And traditionally what was happening was these shipments were just coming into the port, getting unloaded and getting shipped back to China, filled with products, going back, unloaded the warehouse, going back to China. And this was a nice circulation that we had going. But when they get stuck, at the port in the US and there's an increase in demand for goods leaving China and then the containers are not there to ship them out. That's then caused a massive spike in the price. And the situation unfortunately just keep keep getting worse and worse and worse. And I really, really realized it for myself when I think uh, last month I was flying from uh, LA to Scottsdale, Arizona. Beautiful place by the way, first time I was there. Shout out everyone who lives in Scottsdale. Um, and I was flying over uh, Long Beach port had the window seat, right? And it was one of those moments where like, I was reading all these articles and speaking to suppliers and talking to freight forwarders about the shipping situation. I was like, yeah, yeah, that sounds bad. And I was flying and I was like reading the, whatever, like a book or a newspaper or magazine. And I was just sort of looking at the window. Just, what was that? And uh, this is the photo that I took from my phone. I don't know if you guys can see it, but these are all the container ships or the, the vessels at LA port. And in that photo, you can see about 50 vessels all backed up, they're not going to get unloaded for some time. And each vessel holds um, 10 to 20,000 containers. So in that one picture, what I can see with my own eyes is 500,000 to 1 million containers just at LA port waiting to unload. So that was the situation we found ourselves in. You might have seen some articles in the news yourself as well about port closures at Ningbo port in China for a few weeks because of cases and things like that. So that's what's caused the spike. That's what's caused the, the massive increase in price. But I'm going to tell you now what we can do about it. But before I do that, point number two I want to go over is what is the difference between a freight forwarder and a shipping line? Because everyone that I work with and talk to, they're all saying, oh, Kian, like, you know, the freight forwarders are massively putting their prices up. They just want to make a lot more profit. They want to make a lot more margin for the losses that they made in 2020. It's not fair. The freight forwarders are screwing us over. This couldn't be further from the truth. The freight forwarders have actually got your back and they're in a really tough situation as well. It's really important to distinguish the difference between the freight forwarder, which is who you book your shipments with, and the shipping line. Now the shipping lines are the companies which own those big massive uh, vessels, uh, which can take 10 to 20,000, sorry, um, yeah, 10 to 20,000 containers uh, per vessel. And those companies you might have heard are uh, MSC, Evergreen, Maersk, 
Costco, it's Costco, C-O-S-C-O, -O, not the Costco retailer, uh, but they own the shipping lines and then the freight forwarders will book space off the shipping lines. So they'll say, okay, uh, Shanghai to LA, I'll take 100 containers, Xiamen to Houston, I'll take 150 containers. So they book that space and then they sell the space that they've booked from the shipping lines uh, to us in our e-commerce businesses and you know wholesale businesses and stuff like that. So what's happening is that they're getting cancellations at the port like a few days before shipment's supposed to go through or they're getting last minute price increases and they've already confirmed the pricing with us. So they're trying really hard night and day to now get our goods shipped from another port, from another line at a better price. And, they're, and I can tell you, I've talked to many of these freight forwarders and a lot of them are my good friends. They're adding very little margin, very, very little margin uh, onto these uh, shipments. It's really the shipping lines uh, which are causing the disruption and charging the higher prices. But again, they're also in a tough situation. And I think everyone in the industry, uh, the clients, the freight forwarders and the shipping lines would like this situation to go back to normal as soon as possible because the current situation we're in is not sustainable uh, for the industry. So I just wanted to paint that picture for you, what's happened, how we got here and the difference between the freight forwarder and the shipping line. Now, point number three, the magic point in terms of like, how can we get the best price? And it's gonna be, there's a lot of things that we can do here, but I just want you guys to consider um, a few options. One is to, when to ask for that price, right? Having spoken to many different freight forwarders over the last few months, they're telling me like, yeah, we can't get accurate prices um, up until like maybe one week or four days before the sailing date because there's so many things getting moved around, there's cancelled shipments. You know, normally we could get the shipping rates a month before we sail or, you know, two weeks before, no problem, here's your rate, it's fixed, it's done, here we book 40 containers, no problem. Now, you can't even book such a large, um, you, know, you know, order because my first thought was, okay, let me get all my friends together who are shipping large volumes. Let's all group our shipments together, go to one freight forwarder and say, look, here's 200 containers a month. Uh, can you give us your best price? We're gonna guarantee you these 200 con containers per month. And they're like, yeah, that's cool, but that's no use because the issue is with capacity. Uh, we do not have the capacity for that, so we're just gonna disappoint you. So where you might find luck in um, getting a lower price is by shipping less than you normally would and then shipping basically LCL. There's LCL and FCL. FCL is your full container load and that can be a 20 foot, a 40 foot or a 40 foot high cube container and an LCL is a lower container load which is like if you're just doing 3 CBM uh, cubic meters, like 3 CBM, 8 CBM, 12 CBM, you're not gonna book the whole container but you'll take a portion of that container and a lot of these freight forwarders that I've talked to have got loads of different bits of space in different containers from different ports so they can fit you in. Um, so that's one way, but in really, in order to get an accurate price, you have to be asking for your price quotations about a week before your sailing date, then it's a lot more likely uh, to be accurate. Uh, point number two in terms of like saving price, I would say is develop a relationship with your freight forwarder. And if you've seen much of my content before, I always preach the importance of building a relationship with your manufacturer. And that relationship will get you a better price, it'll get you faster lead times, um, they'll push your items to the front of the production schedule, they'll offer you new products. Well, the same exists with your freight forwarder. If you've got a good relationship with your freight forwarder, they can really push your items or your uh, shipments to the front and they can prioritize your shipments or they can offer you a better price. Uh, because they are a customer, you are a customer that they, they value. So ways in which you can develop a good relationship with your freight forwarder is just say to them, hey, I'd love to get on a Zoom call with you and uh, you know discuss all the potential business we have going on in the next year or what you might suggest. You know, find where their office is, maybe send them a bouquet of like flowers, <laughs> maybe not flowers, okay, maybe send them some chocolates or some snacks or something like that, some hot sauce, whatever it may be. But just send them something nice as a gift to say, hey, thanks for all your hard efforts, thanks for all your work, I really appreciate everything you're doing for us in these difficult times. And they're gonna really, really, really appreciate that because when I'm speaking to freight forwarders, they're up at eight, nine, 10, midnight o'clock, right? They're, they're literally putting in uh, the mad hours. So they will greatly appreciate. And as a result, they're also getting attitude as well because a lot of people are thinking that they're the ones pushing the price up and then you're getting angry customers and they're working hard for you on a low margin and then they're getting the angry emails as well. So if you reach out to them and you're nice uh, to them, that's a good way to develop a good relationship with your freight forwarder and that's gonna serve you really well uh, moving forward. Now, point number three and quite a good one that I've had success with 
uh, in the last few months is ask your supplier to uh, absorb half of the shipping cost increase. And what I mean by that is, as we just talked about relationships, and if you have a good relationship with your supplier, the suppliers know fine well what's going on with shipping. They know the issues with freight at the moment, and that because it's affecting them as well. They're losing orders, they're losing sales. As a result, they're having to pay their workers for not doing any work because the orders aren't coming in uh, as, as big as they used to. So you can say to your supplier, let's just say for example, the container price you used to pay was $5,000, and now it's $15,000. You can say to your supplier, the increase of cost for our containers is $10,000. Now, with that increase, our, profit, our products are no longer profitable for us to sell it at this margin. Therefore, we're unable to ship them. If we don't ship them, we don't sell them. If we don't sell them, you don't get the orders. However, if you can split this increase with us 50-50, so we'll just take the increase, which is $10,000, and we'll contribute $5,000 and you contribute $5,000, then the product becomes profitable again, although on a very low margin, but we can still ship them, we can still make the sales, as a result, you still get the orders, and everything just carries on smoothly, and when the shipping, situ shipping situation stabilizes, then we go back to normal. Now, uh, you might not get the full 50%, they might just contribute maybe 25%, but hey, that's still two and a half thousand dollars, which is better than nothing. And in terms of how likely are you to get this from your supplier, well, if you've got a good relationship, if you've worked with them for several years, if you've done many orders with them before, they're very likely to contribute towards your uh, shipping costs. However, um, if it's your first order with them and you're like, hey, pay half the shipping, they'll tell you to get lost. So you have to know and understand and be self-aware of how much leverage do you have with your supplier based on your previous orders and how long you've been working with them. And then you can ask a percentage accordingly and just see uh, if it works. And hey, uh, it doesn't hurt to ask, but you'll definitely um, get some benefits from that as well. Hey guys, just a quick one. If you are getting value from this video, please do me a massive favor and just tickle that like button for me real quick. And if you'd like to see content about sourcing from China and want to see more videos like this to help you save cost in your business, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, ding ding, and turn, click the bell to turn on post notifications so you can stay up to date of the latest of what's going on in China. Thanks, and let's get back to the video. Now, the other thing is that you don't have to ship, this would be cost saving number four, you don't have to ship all of your goods. So let's say that you're ordering, I don't know, 10,000 10, units, and that's gonna be four months stock or six months stock for you. Well, you can say, look, I'll order the 10,000 units, but I only need to ship 3,000 because the shipping cost is so high, I'm just gonna ship what I need. And again, that will take me into that LCL, the lower container load, I'll get a better shipping price, more capacity, more availability for that smaller load. And then, as the shipping cost stabilizes, then I'll ship the rest of it. So maybe in two months' time, it'll be a little bit cheaper. Maybe in six months' time, it'll be a little bit cheaper. Or whenever you need it, you can ship it out. But you're not paying for those goods because you haven't shipped it out yet, so you don't have to pay the balance. And the suppliers don't normally charge you any storage fees either. So you can basically still get your goods made and hold them in your supplier's warehouse and then ship them out uh, when you're ready. Tip number five in terms of how to get a good price would be ask multiple freight forwarders. I mean, I know I just talked about build a relationship with your freight forwarder, which is super important, but I myself have worked with many different freight forwarders over the years. And in this time, when price and capacity are the two main issues, the prices are changing every two weeks and the capacity that these freight forwarders have is also volatile. One month they have a lot, one month they don't have very much. So what I've been doing is I work with maybe four different freight forwarders and I've been asking them all for pricing and every two weeks it, it's not been consistent like, oh hey, this forwarder is always the best price. It's literally just gone down one to four, they've just moved around. So I would ask multiple freight forwarders, ask your friends who are shipping products, which freight forwarders they recommend. Maybe in the comments below uh, in here, uh, just write who you work with if you've had a good experience or if you want some recommendations from me as well, feel free to put down uh, in the comments below and we can all basically uh, help each other out in this process. But I would recommend uh, working with a couple of international freight forwarders, you know, like from your home country, whether it be the US or the UK, as well as working with some Chinese freight forwarders as well, because sometimes the Chinese forwarders can get very, very good pricing as well, just because of the volumes that they do as well. But two things of caution I would say with the Chinese forwarders is that if they're quoting you a DDP price, and I'll explain shortly what DDP is uh, for anyone who doesn't know, um, 
that basically means I deliver duty paid and that's the supplier paying for your, uh, you're paying the supplier for the cost of goods, cost of customs clearance, your import duty, and then also the cost of freight as well. So you get that final cost. But sometimes they lure you in with a very good price and why they've given you a very good price is they've given you the lowest possible uh, import duty code, the HTS code or the HS code. And um, sometimes they're clearing it at a code which they really, really shouldn't, so your goods can get stuck at customs. So if you do go with a Chinese freight forwarder and if they are doing a DDP shipment, always ask them what is the HTS code that you're clearing these goods at through customs and then check that with the records and, um, and then you'll make sure that you're compliant. But I just actually finished a video and uploaded all about HTS codes. So if, you, if you're not sure about how to find your HTS code and all that sort of stuff, I've got a very nice detailed screen share video. Uh, I'll link that above, but definitely check that out on the YouTube channel uh, as well, and that will um, keep you right. The other thing about the Chinese freight forwarders as well is that watch out for the freight forwarders on Facebook because you'll get people reach out to you, they're gonna join Facebook groups. Uh, I've got my own Facebook group sourcing with Kian and I'm very, very selective of who I let into that group. I, I can't tell you how many people I've blocked from that group based on people that have got bad reputations, people I don't trust, uh, and they just tried to get in. And basically what they're doing is that they're mid middlemanning uh, services. So they'll come in and there'll just be some um, guy in a basement in China and he'll be saying, yeah, I'm a freight forwarder, I'm a big company, da -da -da, give me your shipments and I'll, I'll handle the quotes for you, etc." But they're literally just taking your quotes, at, taking your shipments, adding on a margin and then giving it to a Chinese freight forwarder and pretending like they're them. That's very, very risky. And also you're, you're paying them. So anything could go wrong at any moment and you'll, you'll be pretty stuck. So. If you are gonna find a freight forwarder on Facebook that you've not worked with before, double check their website, uh, go on there, look at the contact information, look at their address, make sure they've got a real office. If they've got a phone number, phone them up and actually make sure that they actually exist. Uh, so just be super careful uh, who you do business with as well. And the final thing I would say in terms of saving cost on freight, uh, and they kind of touched on it in the previous point, is import your goods at the correct HTS code. Now, as I said, I just made a video on this, and if you have your products, whatever it may be, the HTS code could be 15%, it could be 20%, it could be 5%. In that video, I've showed you how to find the methods, and I've given five different methods in terms of how to import at the lowest possible HTS code. So I can really help in that video bring your import costs down, uh, and have an advantage over your competitors by importing it at the lowest possible import duty code, which is still compliant. We're not doing anything funny here. It's, it's, all, it's all legit. Uh, so definitely check that video out. Uh, and I don't know, I'll probably try and link it here, but or it'll be, I'll put it in the description of the video uh, down below as well. So point number four, which I wanna go over is what are the correct shipping terms? What are the INCO terms? Because quite often a lot of people ask me like what's FOB, what's XWorks, what's DDP, what's the difference, which one should I be doing, which one's cheaper uh, and now with freight being so volatile at the moment I just want to take a, a brief second to explain each one uh, just and even for the for the advanced people it's good to remind yourself um, of what are the, all the current options. Now I've also got a worksheet that I've made which I just put on the screen right now which you can take a look and see oh that all makes sense and that explains all the different types of shipping methods and I'll make that available for download as well if you go to the sourcingwithkian.com website uh, or join a Facebook group and just comment there uh, and I'll find a way to email it to you or create a separate page that you can download it. I'll figure that out, I'm not very tech savvy but um, I'm getting better. So anyway, the three main options that you should be concerned about are first of all XWorks, FOB and DDP. Now let's put the factory here and then your port uh, or your warehouse in the US here. So X works is the, I'm paying for the stock. The stock is complete and it's sitting in the Chinese factory. Now X works is I'm going to pay for the freight. I'm going to pick it up from the factory. I'm going to move it to the port in China. It's going to ship. I'm going to pay for the customs clearance and I'm going to deliver it to my own warehouse. So I've paid from everything of picking it up from the factory. The factory just make the goods and they're like, here it is, come and pick it up. That's X works all the way. You cover all the costs all the way. Then FOB is imagine your dollar cost from the factory includes your factory sending the goods from the factory in China to the port in China. And when they send it to the port, they hand it over to your appointed freight forwarder to their warehouse. So when you're paying for your shipment goods, you're paying for it from the port in let's say Shanghai or Ningbo all the way to um, wherever your destination address uh, would be in the US that would be FOB. And that's the most common method. That's mainly what I use. Uh, and if you've got 
good freight forwarders, then FOB is kind of like the normal. And that stands for freight on board or free on board. A couple of things people say. Uh, and then DDP is the opposite of X works. Like uh, the goods are ready in the factory, the factory included in the cost of the product will also cover the cost uh, of shipping, import duty, and then delivery to your final warehouse as well. And DDP is probably more common for the smaller items. Let's say you're doing iPhone cases or a leather wallet or key rings, something that you can fit 500 units in like one carton. Well, they only need to send two or three cartons uh, depending on the size of your order. And that can normally be organized by air freight. They'll send it by DHL or UPS or FedEx or something like that. So it's like, well, we're just gonna send it to you and then uh, here's the all in cost. And as I said before, just be very, very careful uh, with DDP that you ask for the correct HTS code that they are clearing those goods through customs for you because the last thing you want is those goods to get stuck. So those are the, the, the three main methods and if you really want to compare the price, like if the factory gives you a DDP price um, and you want to compare it, also just ask them, can you give me an FOB price as well? And then literally all you do is you get a quote from your freight forwarder um, so you can take the cost of the goods plus the cost of your freight. And normally the freight forwarder will include the customs clearance in the quote as well, but just double check all the reports and invoices that a freight forwarder gives you uh, because everyone sort of breaks it down a little bit differently. So you have to be able to compare apples with apples. Anyway, um, you wanna basically get the cost of the goods from the supplier and then the cost of the freight, add, them, add the two costs together and then divide it by the number of units that you've ordered. And that's basically your unit cost. And then you can compare that then just to your DDP cost. And you can see, okay, is it cheaper to go FOB with my freight forwarder or is it cheaper just to go DDP with the factory and, and they handle everything. So those are kind of uh, the main shipping terms explained. And as I said, I will make that available for download uh, in the description of this video down below. And if you don't see it for any reason, uh, please just leave a comment and I'll, I'll figure out a way to send it to you. So point number six, um, how long will this last? It's kind of what's on everyone's mind, what everyone wants to know. And uh, before I answer it, I just need to, one second, I just need to get my crystal ball for a moment. Yeah, it's heavy. All right, okay, here we go. Here's the crystal ball. Need to shake it a little bit. What does it say? Yeah, cool. All right, I got it. Put it back. All right, the crystal ball has told us that uh, this freight situation uh, will last. Prices are getting slightly better. Uh, right now, we're just in Oct the beginning of October, 2021. and. It's gradually getting better as uh, you know, warehouses are not shutting down anymore, more people are getting vaccinated, there's less cases, um, and, and that's, that's great, right? So it's gradually coming down. However, Q4 is the busiest time of the year to ship products as you know, the Christmas sales and stuff like that. So the demand is actually at a peak while the situation is getting better. So it's gonna kind of ride out and be stable until the end of Q4. However, be mindful that Chinese New Year is February 1st, 2022. So in January, the first month, freight factories, everything is gonna to start to shut down. So nothing is really gonna happen uh, mid to end of January and beginning of February. So again, that's gonna cause a pile up of shipments right before Chinese New Year and also right after Chinese New Year for all the goods that couldn't come out. However, as I said at the start of this video, was that there was a container pile up in the US and the UK and all around the world. And in that one month when China are not working, well, those containers are gonna be emptied, unloaded, and then shipped back to China. So after Chinese New Year, they should have more containers at their disposal, which will therefore uh, reduce the cost. And it's not gonna get better overnight. I envision that it's probably gonna, the costs are gonna get maybe like 5% better month to month after March. So let's just say Q2 uh, 2022, I think is when we're gonna to start to see the prices gradually drop off and probably towards Q3, Q4, 2022 is when we can sort of see like a 50% uh, cost decrease. That's my predictions. That's what the crystal ball told me. If I'm right, give me credit. If I'm wrong, blame the crystal ball. Uh, but maybe we can check back this video uh, in a month or so, not a month, in a year and see what happened. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to jump on, press record, make this quick video for you guys, explain the freight situation for anyone who was unsure and give you guys some clarity 
in terms of you know what's happening and also give you guys some advice in terms of what you can do to get through the situation and I always feel that look there's always going to be problems in any business that we're in but with every problem creates an opportunity and as long as we can apply those uh, six steps that I mentioned in um, in step three in terms of how to get the best price then you'll become you'll come out of the situation okay so I hope that was helpful for you guys and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video take care Thank you.